but if you have eight, you cannot do that. You don't know how that you got that. So that's like that's something happens instead. And that means to, to get this value, you have to consume something. Right? So, so that means the AI have to make it is uh, consuming stuff to give an answer. And, and that's what we want to do. Can we start again, please? Yeah. <laughs> we need to be fairly. Well, I, I don't want to be too ruthless. It's supposed to be. <laughs> right. Uh, can we start? Um, we now have a paper by. Hi, Young Kim and Louis Lou Kaufman. And um, it's all, uh, the wheel will work on the mouse. If, ah, okay. If, if yeah, you want no. to what, what advances the slide here? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the mouse, the wheel on the mouse will. Wheel? Oh, uh, okay. I'll just. No, I think. The, you know. Oh, you'll give me a key for the up and down. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Start recording. Uh, oh, yes, oh, I started you, recording. You, well, yeah, you okay. do that. I did okay. that a bit earlier okay. because you can forget. Okay. Otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, should I stand there? Maybe I can control her. Or if you want to advance it, go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a double act, really. So right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Far <fire> away. <laughs> okay, we're we're going to talk about conversation. <laughs> that sounds good. And um, I think we want to move off from the first slide, which, if you get the slides afterwards, is a summary of the, of what's there. Mm. So we contemplate a conversation between two individuals. Mm. Uh, we contemplate a conversation between two individuals called plus and minus. Conversation arises from a com commonality. It arises from a place where the distinction between plus and minus has disappeared or has not yet appeared. Relationship arises from commonality or from sharing. How does share time and space occur? We suggest that the answer to such questions is in the basic commonality of relationship. One can address questions of sharing from the point of view of separate individuals and how they're related. We begin in commonality and we see how weaving between individuals arises from the commonality. We begin with a state PM, plus or minus. It's neither plus nor is it minus. Plus and minus have their roots in PM. Of course, you can imagine PM as you like, we we make an abstract uh, pointer to it. Mm -hmm. Our ontological precondition is this commonality. We begin with the premise that commonality is already there or has been there more correctly before any interaction of the individuals. Here's a diagram. PM, the commonality and uh, coming from it or arising in relation to it are plus and minus, a tableau for the conversation. Each of plus and minus have emerged and they're each connected to the PM, a place of unity for them. We describe an external view of the conversational tableau. Each participant can either speak or hand over the speaking to the other participant. Mm -hmm. How we're doing now. <laughs> oh, so the PM is neither plus nor minus, but plus and minus arise from PM. You can think of PM as giving rise to an oscillation between plus and minus. This is related to the mathematics of imaginary numbers, as we shall see. Um, and PM is plus minus plus minus plus minus. Um, the oscillation can be seen as going from plus to minus or from minus to plus, and this is the beginning of conversation. 
and before going to the next slide, you can think of that plus minus as a kind of ambiguity. Is it plus or is it minus? Or it might be a paradox. It is that twilight place between something being definite and something being indefinite. And notice that in the diagram, we have written the definitenesses as plus minus or minus plus, two ways of looking at the ambiguity. Go ahead. Okay, so this is the talking stick. In important native Indian conversations, the speaker holds a, a stick, talking stick, and hands it over to the next person who will speak. Uh, in English, the word I is our talking stick, and each person who speaks can say, I'm the one who says I. Mm -hmm. So here's a diagram of the conversation between plus and minus. Plus is speaking, and that's going towards I, I not being the square root of minus one yet, you get the picture, but just I am speaking. Mm -hmm. But then I could hand over the talking, the speaking to minus. Uh, and I, we've I indicated it in our diagram by the talking stick. And similarly, minus is speaking and hands over the talking stick to plus. Um, because it's minus speaking, we wrote minus I. But of course, if I were minus and I was speaking, I wouldn't say, I'm speaking now. I would say, I'm speaking now. I wouldn't say, minus is speaking now. But I might say, I, Lou, am speaking if I wanted to emphasize it. So the minus is, is a naming, and the I split into my I and minus I. But on the other hand, the I in language doesn't split. It's always I, whoever is speaking. And so when it's whoever is speaking and the I, you see it's going back into the plus minus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's about the point of view in a way that I will talk about it more in the next slide, I think, but I can add to it a little bit that minus I is still I, but to I is not I. So um, like metaphysically, you can say also, it's um, not just I, but to me, I, it's not I, because it's the other. <laughs> it's the same diagram. Mm -hmm. And we're saying in the diagram what we just said, but right. it's worth reading it again. The appearance of the I and the minus I in the diagram. When I plus is speaking, then minus I becomes for if if I'm a plus and I'm speaking, then minus I becomes for me the not I, the other. The situation reverses when minus is speaking and has the minus I, then the minus minus I is the I, and the minus is acting like a minus. Yeah. So uh, there is an analogy between our conversational diagram and the mathematics of the complex plane. And here's the complex plane with its well known interpretation in terms of i as the square root of minus one. When you i, the square root of minus one, is out there at 90 degrees, one unit away from the real axis, plus one, minus one. And when you multiply by I, you rotate by 90 degrees. And when you wrote multiply by I, whenever you multiply by I, you rotate by 90 degrees. So the first multiplication is to the I speaking, and the next multiplication is the handing over. And then there is the speaking and the handing over, and you have the fourfold operator of the square root of minus one. But as you see, it's exactly analogous mm -hmm. to our fourfold operator with the handing over of speech. Um, after Gauss and Argonne around 1800, interpreted I as rotation by 90 degrees. Of course, that's well known, but you know there was a period of about 180 years of confusion before that, when people wondered what could the square root of negative unity mean?
So um, the complex imaginary fourfold operator I can be seen as the process generator of conversation, as uh, we just explained as well. Um, do you want to do something mm. like this? Mm. Oh, wait. Um, okay. One thing. In the complex plane, of course, there's the zero. It's worth reminding ourselves of that. Mm -hmm. The zero is not the plus minus, but in a way it is. It's like it's like prefiguring the idea that the plus minus is sitting up here above that complex plane mm -hmm. somewhere. And, um, and the zero is its image down in the plane. It's neither plus nor minus. It's, it's like the plus minus. Right. And from here, we can imagine something more interesting dramatically. Um, thus, we see that the basic fourfold circularity of exchange and conversation matches exactly with the fourfold nature of the square root of negative unity. Indeed, the i with i squared equals minus one or minus negative one corresponds to the personal eyes that occur for the participants of the conversation. I is the personal pronoun for plus, minus I is, uh, this is a designated person, personal pronoun for minus. Minus I puts the name minus to form a designated personal pronoun. In the mathematics, I and minus I are different, but easily confused, each being numbers whose square is negative unity. In our linguistics, I and minus I stand for the personal I's of each speaker. For any given speaker, there is just I. We're repeating ourselves, but we don't mind. Uh, the extra distinction is usually not said. I may say, I think that the clocks are slow. You would say exactly the same thing. But if I had to sign an affidavit to that effect, I would put my name to it. Well, you have to do this. this is I think I should read this. Yes. If you ask him, oh, I see what you mean, right. <laughs> if you ask a mathematician about the square root of negative unity, she's likely to ask, which one? Pretty it's an old joke among mathematicians. <laughs> uh, yeah, math mathematicians have their own breed of jokes, as you know. Um, for example, what's an abelian grape? Oops, I said this punchline instead of <laughs> what's purple and commutes? I told you the answer. <laughs> so um, it is always I am the one who says I. In describing the conversation, we label two selves as I and minus I. This allows us to line up um, the two selves in the conversation with the two roots of negative unity, I and minus I. At this point, you may find a puzzling. How can it be so that the name or pointer to a self should correspond to a negative root of unity? I mean, a root of negative unity. And yet our story shows how this comes about. We start with the participant plus, we rotate to the I state of speaking. We then rotate via the talking stick to go to the other participant minus. So two rotations go from plus to minus, just so in the mathematics, I times I times plus equals minus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I wanted to make a parenthetical remark because when Sydney asked earlier, uh, what does um, I have to do with self-reference? Mm -hmm. um, this talk in its way is another answer to yeah. Sydney's question. That's why I was thinking too much. Apparently. <laughs> you want to speak? Uh, I think you should do this. All right. Well, before Gauss and Argon, mathematicians were puzzled about how could there be a number with I squared equals minus one. We can be puzzled about how a self, an I, could be related to an, a little I so that I times I equals minus one. Our interpretation is a way to understand both puzzles. Both puzzles. If, if you change history's order, you could imagine someone inventing the square root of minus one by thinking about conversation. So where do we go from here? I think that's where I am. Uh, so uh, we can imagine a pyramid 
over the plane of articulation. And uh, Lou already mentioned the zero, and uh, this is something that's more interesting than I mentioned. Uh, one direction is to think about the unity of the conversation in relation to PM, an indicator of unity, and to see the larger geometry of the pyramid of PM and the plane of the articulation. The pyramid shows the unity of the conversation as a whole. Note that the pyramid can be seen as two tetrahedra, one with the vertices minus i, um, well, minus. Minus. I think there's a misprint there, but I'm thinking of the two halves, right? Yeah. Um, there's the i and the minus i and the minus one, mm -hmm. one, one side, and there's the i and the minus i and the plus one, the other side, mm -hmm. and those two tetrahedra, which are speaking to one another across mm -hmm. the the mm. talking stick mm -hmm. shift. The left te tetrahedron can represent the left speaker. The right can represent the right speaker. <laughs> the speakers interact along their commonality, along the actions of passing the right to speak back and forth. Mm. So Thinking this way, we can see that PM unfolds not just to plus and minus, but also to I and minus I. Indeed, we saw that PM does unfold in two ways when we considered oscillation. So here's the oscillation again. And the PM can be thought of as going to the plus I and the plus and the minus, that's this way. But on the pyramid, it also goes to I and minus I. And in the next slide, we'll point out how to see that the plus minus doesn't fold, unfold into the I and the minus I just as well as into the plus and the minus. Well, I, think you I guess just, yeah. maybe I. Yeah. So, so what I, I call the plus and the minus pairs, iterants, plus to minus or minus to plus. And an iterant is an indication of an ordered oscillation and can be taken as an ordered pair of values for this discussion. But an ordered oscillation, plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, versus minus to plus, minus to plus. The iterants are amphibians between process and value, between verb and noun. Just so are ourselves amphibians between being and becoming. And this oscillation can be regarded as ordered from plus to minus or minus to plus, that's already uh, spoken. The iterants made time sensitive can be seen as the square roots of negative unity. Now we didn't make them time sensitive yet exactly, but we <laughs> sort of did, you see, because we said that we could think of them as temporal, but going with an order to the temporality, right? Yeah. Um, and, and when you think of them that way, then they have the possibility of turning into I and minus I, as we'll see in a moment. Mm -hmm. But there's an idea there I want to say before before I go to, wait, you could do that. So you can do this. Can you do want it. me to do this slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I wanted to say that if you think of a plus minus interacting with another plus minus, mm -hmm and they're temporally sensitive, then one of them takes a little bit of time to interact with the other and turns into a minus plus. But if a minus plus interacts with a plus minus, then at any given look at it, it's minus interacting with plus or plus interacting with minus. It's minus in any case. And so the plus minus interacts with itself to produce minus one. It's the square root of minus one. So, so we've indicated here how two oscillations could interact in, a, in an ordinary way by just interacting at their appropriate places. Mm -hmm. A and C occur at the same time, so we get AC. And we write AB times CD is ACBD. And we would have plus minus times plus minus is one, since the product of two negative ones is a plus one. And um, if we were to think of Desmond's talk a moment, uh, a few minutes ago, that's one of the possibilities. Uh, that's the Minkowski plane, where you want somebody who squares one. So we wouldn't discount it, but we're going to get a minus one by putting in the temporality. 
Just, no. just a quick question. Um, is it does is it is it are the poles meeting up as plus minus and then or plus plus minus minus? Is there a certain preferential polarity? No. So it can be plus to minus and minus minus plus plus, or does it always have to be plus times minus equals minus one? I think this slide actually answers what you're talking about. Read it, uh, read it with us and see, okay. see if it does, right? And would you like um, to read? You can keep going with these slides because it's what we added. You want me to read? Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> the more, more math. Well, yeah. We would like to see a new product, a new product, not the, uh, the obvious one, but slightly shifted one, call it sharp and, and my plus minus sharp with, plus minus should be negative. And how is that going to happen? Well, if if I define sharp to be first shift one and then combine them, then it will work just fine. Notice how the mechanics works at the bottom of the slide. When I take star, it, it flips it to the other one. Plus minus star is minus plus. That's conjugation. That's shifting by one time step. And if I combine, a with B by taking A times B star, which means B got shifted in time a little bit before combining with A. Then I find plus minus combines with minus plus coordinate wise at each time. So minus times plus is minus and plus times minus is minus and you get minus one. Does that answer your yeah, question? So, so shifting your perspective, you get plus one or minus one, depending on how you combine them. Uh, I think I'm going to have to uh, walk over to her to hear her exactly, because oh, so I don't sorry. hear well enough to I'll discriminate just, between yeah. certain things that you say. say. I'm yeah. just saying, so it's like a shift. If you shift yeah. your perspective, you get yeah. plus uh, one or minus one. Oh, come one. on and join us. Yeah, okay. exactly. Just join the conversation for a moment. Now, now ask the question again. Oh, I was just asking. Um, so depending on the time on the shift, you can get either a plus one or a minus one, depending on whether you shift by one. That's right. If I shifted the plus minus, it would turn into minus plus. If I shifted the minus plus, it would turn into okay. plus minus. But if A is combined with the shift of B, then then it will. If A is combined with the shift of A, then it'll be opposite. Right. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So Over to you. just so when we perceive ourselves, me and myself, there is a time shift between the seer and the scene. What I see is the past, and yet I am present to myself. There is a paradox in shared and present time. The iterants plus minus and minus plus seen as time sensitive entities are square roots of negative unity. They are precursors to selves. So here time has entered our discussion in more than one way. We have the cyclical time of the conversational interchange and its rotation of selves. We have the inherent an inherent oscillation of the unity PM that brings forth the distinct selves and with it, um, the movement from one self to another self. The shared time of I and minus I and the shared time of plus minus and minus plus, and remember they did exist in a shared time. Mm -hmm. Each self, each I is given an internal time. The plus minus is plus, it's an oscillation that starts with plus, the other starts with minus. The conversation is an entrainment of the individual oscillations into a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I can. I wanted to add uh, to Sydney's question that uh, so in this context uh, related to conversation and the structure, so I and minus I, so I is actually minus I and minus I is actually I. So um, that was another thing that I wanted to mention. So we'd like to bring in Euler and the complex circle and the Euler formula, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then we have rotations by arbitrary angle theta. If you multiply by e to the i theta, instead of going by 90 degrees, you go by theta, as you know. Um, and as Desmond was mentioning, 
if you take the derivative of e to the i theta with respect to theta, then i comes down. So the derivative of e to the i theta is i times e to the i theta. I rotates e to the i theta by 90 degrees. So if you think of the vector e to the i theta and rotate it by 90 degrees, it's pointing this way along the circle of rotation. So, the, so that when you do a tiny step of e to the i theta, you're moving along that circle. A lot of wisdom in the exponential as we know. And so we can think of continuous transition and oscillation mm -hmm. with regard to the speaker. We can think of internal states of the speakers via the exponential. Mm -hmm. I think you might have more to say about that. Right, I mean, so in our discussion, we were mentioning that, so through this, we can see a conversation as a whole thing, as two participants uh, being in this one whole thing as, uh, uh, as participants of this uh, conversation um, instead of two separate individuals. And so in this sense, how we can understand this um, interchange of I and the other I, so not I or minus I, uh, are becoming one in this uh, pyramid structure that we just showed you. And also one in the one whole circle. Exactly. And with, with Euler's formula, we have a beautiful representation of any point on the circle, our circle of conversation moving continuously from plus to minus and back around that circularity. It is also the case that each point on the circle becomes an operator of rotation, rotating by its own angle, just as I rotated by 90 degrees. The conversation is now seen in the unity of its circularity. So with the geometric language we've built so far, we can ask many questions about the nature of shared time, the nature of personal and public time, the structure of personal conversation in the larger social whole, the emergence of distinctions for conversational domains, the nature of external and internal, the created world and the natural world. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to comment a little more about those themes before um, we jump to. No, I. Uh, I think that this is uh, this slide is summarizing, in some way, where we started, mm -hmm. and of course we haven't answered all these questions, but I think that what we said actually does provide a. Uh, place from which to discuss these questions. Right. Well, so we started with a question uh, like what is conversation, what is shared time, and how can we understand and approach them? So, I mean, I mean by the way, I'm a philosopher, and, uh, you know, what philosophy does is um, to make questions. It's not to answer questions. And I think uh, that's what we are doing and we were doing, we have been doing. And so these are the questions that could come out of this discussion, but it's not necessarily to answer these questions, but we can come up with even more questions. And uh, by creating more and more questions, we can understand the nature of all these things a little bit better, you know, little by little. Mm -hmm. In Laws of Form, G. Spencer Brown writes, we take as given the idea of distinction and the idea of indication, and that one cannot make an indication without drawing a distinction. We take, therefore, the form of distinction for the form. It is in contemplating conversation that we confront the possibility of distinction and indication, disclosing and hiding from one another in an endless round. Mm -hmm. And this is one way to stop. Yes. <laughs> or stop. Right. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, and this representa the representation about two entities, uh, I and minus I. Mm -hmm. And then you build this uh, triangle structure and you have the conversation. Uh, uh, and then you have uh, like synchronization. So, so they're going around 
is, is a kind of synchronization who is having the stick mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then but the structure mm -hmm. is that uh, what is that representing is that like representing like uh, the synchronization of the stick or is it more the content of in the message or the interaction between the two can, can uh, it's just what i'm trying to uh, you're, you're curious about this pyramid structure why we yeah, even what have it that represents oh. if you are going to like uh, think about just two people talking or two entities mm -hmm. and they have they're talking one at a time and they have a message going through so so, so what how should i understand without mathematics understanding this structure wait can i answer first and then i can give you the talking stick <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> minus i and <laughs> well we're both i okay. and minus i okay. well um so the circularity uh represents the circularity of the conversation but we thought of the structure of pyramid as the top point as pm presenting pm meaning that it shows the the wholeness of the conversation situation so that it's something that is um within us but it's also beyond us as possibility and um so that's you can understand that as the commonality that is there that's how yeah. we began this presentation the commonality as the precondition of our um as like ontological precondition and also as um probably epistemological precondition meaning that it enables us to have any conversation okay so, so so basically when i and minus i are in reach somewhere uh -huh. then all the possibilities in interaction between it, i it, and minus it, i exactly so pyramid okay. was representing yeah. uh, the wholeness or the um, yeah, the wholeness of this uh, conversational situation. Yeah. You, you can see the different movements if you think about actual conversation. Sometimes you are inquiring of the other um, some point. Mm -hmm. And if if you both understand that, then you, are, you understand that you're, you're in unity with regard to that. And then you can go on, which yeah. gives you freedom. Uh, or it may be that you understand that you uh disagree but it still uh comes to the unity of the, the larger structure of it to you to understand that uh, uh, uh when uh, minus i and i are meeting and have this structure uh, and then afterwards when they're leaving again uh, has something happened to i and minus i i'm just a lost because if they have some communication is there like uh, is is minus i something before it, it interacts with I compared to afterwards. I don't know if it's like... well. I mean, it's like philosophically imagining. I think that's why pyramid structure can be interesting for us because uh, it's something that's beyond the circularity, the circle of um, the conversation. So by having this PM point, the top of the pyramid, we can ensure that it's all the possibility is always there. But even if uh, we don't necessarily have a conversation uh, with another person, because I mean, we're not always talking constantly. I mean, but uh, that's what I meant by our ontological precondition, uh, this commonality or commonality as the ontological precondition. So it's, I imagined as uh, we are there um, already in this, existing in this relatedness or commonality and uh, what's happening, the circle movement, is what's happening between us, but uh, the possibility has to be there. So um, even when we're not talking, it's not like we're out of this structure. Notice um, strategies that we use in conversation. For example, I may say to you, uh, you're saying to me that, and I try to say back to you what you said to me and we find whether we agree or not through that or or there are somewhat ironical but nevertheless very useful methods that people use for example people always tell the the anecdote about niels bohr that uh he would say to the other person um um our thinking is not so far apart as you might believe about something. and and uh, the commentators always say 
he, what he meant by that was that we disagree completely. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, he's actually giving the other person the opportunity to say something more. He isn't saying, go away, right, okay. when he says that. So, uh, and, and, and that's quite yeah. interesting because I have uh, one, one of the things uh, my mind is thinking a lot about that is like when you have like two people or two entities and they communicate. Uh, it seems like when I'm looking at just my family members and different people, that each person has like one way of looking out of, on the world. Mm. And it seems like if we scale that up to like globally all the people, it seems like there are groups of people looking more out in, in one way compared to other people. Uh, and even in that groups, they, they don't agree or looking, mm. observing the, the world at the same way. Right. So, so, and then in my, my idea is to like, if you have two entities and they're looking out a little bit, uh, eats their windows and they enter in a conversation like uh, this precondition, like you have in this area, yeah. then yeah, two things can happen. It, it can be like in this sport uh, yeah. that, yeah, he's leaving and they're totally not agreeing on things, but wouldn't it be interesting if somehow uh, one could help, like, uh, just align a little bit the, the two overlapping worldviews during the interaction. So if somehow we could mm -hmm. find ways to do that, yeah. even though we have the predisposed... Yeah, per particularly among, among groups of people who are antagonistic or have been... I mean, we see in the U.S. politics how yeah, yeah, yeah. great, great huge groups of people have been program to look in different directions yeah. and say yeah. different words yeah and 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 it would be nice to somehow like uh, touch those people and mm -hmm. bring them back on a track or just mm -hmm. align them a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and if we could scale that up and align people a little bit more and right. i don't know if that means you have to new goal right. you know the Can tech I industry and things like that a good question yeah. that uh mm -hmm. was we need to go right two other that. people asking questions okay. nicola first then you said but i i want to answer you want to answer, answer yeah because that's a good question because that's how at least uh i started in the beginning like our conversation because uh that question is very much related in the modern especially european philosophical framework to subjectivity, the problem of subjectivity that you, that what you described as each person's worldview, that's each person's subjectivity. And that was the question. That's why we asked in the beginning of the presentation also, how is shared time possible? Mm -hmm. And how is conversation possible, like at all? Because it seems like, so in the philosophical framework that we have now in the present time in Europe, especially, is that it seems like, you know, Kogito uh, Ergozum, that's the center. So I think, therefore, I am. But how can I know, like, what you think? How can I even know that you're even thinking, you know? So this is the problem, the biggest problem of uh, modern European philosophy or Western philosophy. And by having this commonality, uh, this PM, this, that was our uh, imagination, um, we can have this possibility open between two different subjects. So the subjects don't have to be something individual, closed down and exclusive, but it could be something that is already related to one another. So it is, we are existing uh, as uh, related to another subject, not as a cogito ergo zoom subject that is separated from the world and yes. everybody else. As G. Spencer Brown says that communication is superficial to communion, mm -hmm. which we think is already into. Exactly. That is exactly the point that we were trying to say. And, and this helps to uh, helps us to imagine this uh, the situation or the, the, the situation of the wholeness that we are already in. That's what I meant also by ontological precondition so that we are ontologically already related to one another, even if we're not in a conversational situation, just by being me, just being there, so. Yeah. And of course, you can always look for 
points of commonality to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. Right, Nicola. So yes, yeah, so just uh, thinking along those lines, I was just thinking about your actual structure mm -hmm. that you could that one way to see it or what one development might be to look to take it into a spiral from from a circle into a spiral. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that you what would that represent if you had a radius greater than one? And the conversation goes out in a logarithmic spiral. Can you analogize that? I think that was that one. Yeah. Say, say the <laughs> Instead of going around in a circle, your complex number has a positive radius or even a negative radius. You've been going continuously, continuously around the circle. Yes. I was talking about a spiral going the other way. You know, like the fact that the, the, the sun, you know, that the, you know, we're going around the sun, but the sun is going, so we're going in a spiral like that. So yeah. it's going on, but we can be, it can be expanded. Well, certainly there's this. Going. We, we, you want to think about as a spiral, the conversation is yes. a spiral. It's going around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe we chose to go around this way. It could have gone around this way. Mm -hmm. But the point is that when you come back, you're not at the same place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. You might you exactly. might exactly. regard exactly. yourself at the same place, but it's it's evolving. Instead of cos, cos the equals I sign are cos the equals I sign and R is different to one, mm -hmm. then you have a spiral. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think this structure in this, uh, imaginable structure is already within the structure that we presented, I think. That's what I think we was meaning to say, that the point of cir this, this uh, cir circle structure, because like he already mentioned and we mentioned in the presentation, the point of I is not um, fixed, it's moving. So that's, it's move. It's not like plus minus uh, I minus I, it's like, it's not four, fixed points. Mm -hmm. So it's like in the spiral, but it's just, um, um, but it doesn't have to be a spiral uh, structure. Within this uh, circular structure, you can still have this um, um, diversity or diverse points of view that's like not even um, agreed in the end. I know his friends. Oh, right, yes. Do you want? Oh, well, I think we have Sid, Fred. Sydney was actually going to be next, but Fred will be the next one. No. My question Do you want to come up here? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I will just ask. Um, <laughs> this point is this if this is the icosahedron symmetry, symmetrical circle, this is PM and this would be MP. Is this one? Well, P PM is neither plus nor minus. It's just a point of unity. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to reflect and get another another one, you can play with the geometry of that. But I was saying um, this is still PM. And call it MP if you want. Yeah. OK. And the, the other thing, quick thing is, how does the law of excluded middle do not in middle and plus huh? minus? How does the law of the excluded middle? In Western well, philosophy. Well, we, we, weren't, we weren't necessarily focusing this into uh, uh, an Aristotelian logic of things. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll so, so those participants could have uh, could have been um, uh, rather illogical or Aristotelian logical, or they could have been uh, adherents of the third third value of logic, whatever they wanted to be. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and that could re, re resolve into. Peculiar conversations. I have a friend who who's firmly established in four valued logic, and doesn't uh, doesn't go outside of four valued logic. Things are possibly true and possibly false, uh, and true and false. And that person doesn't uh, believe in infinities beyond the countable. You know, so he's over there, and I'm over here in a more or less classical frame when I'm talking mathematics, and we can't talk to one another except by accepting each other's for the moment. Well, I was just asking for a Phil, so philosophical point of view, how does a lot of excluded middle in Eastern philosophy preclude a lot of problems with dualities? Well, that come well right. I mean, if you're, if you're if you're if you're in general looking at law of the excluded middle, it says things are to be either one way or another. Mm -hmm. But but in some situations things are to be one way or another. If you and I are playing poker and I have the ace of spades. I know for full well you don't have the ace of spades. That's good to know. Um, but 
but lots of things are in the twilight in reality. And, in, and so you wouldn't, you don't in ordinary, yeah. in your ordinary life, and use the law of the excluded middle all the time. I was just saying, because the law of the excluded middle kind of frames conversations and arguments and well, logic, so that's how you can run into problems. With well, for us, I think that I'll answer to that question as, so we think of uh, physics and mathematics, like especially from like non-physics and physicists and mathematicians point of view, is something that is not uh, subjective, meaning that it's something that is objective and doesn't have any political or personal views or philosophical even. But is that really true? Yeah, I, I think, think there are a lot of this that could be very good political and yeah, right. Views, so these very, I mean just, like mathematical, mathematical or physical uh, interpretation can be also very political and well, not more than can be, I think. So how we interpret these phenomena, like things and whatever we see, that's, uh, that cannot be just, out, it can, it's not out of, out of our world, meaning that it does, um, it does come from where we stand and also affects how we live as well. So it's providing the framework, especially that's what philosophy believes that philosophy is doing. And so how to interpret that, how to understand that, um, that is a philosophical question. And uh, and that that's the framework of duality especially has been dominating the way of thinking of our, especially modern world. And that's how we think and live. And um, and we can challenge that by asking questions. And uh, this is one of the things that we can do. Okay, another comment about, about the law of the excluded middle. You'll notice in the way we were speaking that there is the plus and the minus, but they're not actually separate. They're part of the unity. Mm -hmm. So there is no law of the excluded middle in this large context, mm -hmm. right? They have a commonality. That's why, I, that's why I was wondering like whether whether the law of the excluded middle is kind of creating a false separateness that really isn't there mm -hmm. between plus and minus. Mm -hmm. And I think he's Brad, do you want to ask a question? Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful, wonderful abstraction, Lou and, and Tim. Um, I like the way you're coming at it, but I, I find it interesting that you chose human conversation as the projection in the real world of the form that you're considering, where the form of interaction here um, seems to be remarkably abstract and one could come at animal mating behavior or the interactions among bacteria, all of which can be looked at in terms of um, re reciprocity and wholeness and shared sharedness. One thing that your abstraction leaves out, and it's obvious on the figure here, is change in the participants. So neither, neither plus nor minus are changed by their interaction. And I see the two um, dragons here who are mutually eating each other. Neither of them is actually being consumed or digested or spat out. So if one of the participants were changed, I wonder what the consequences are for PM, the uh, very vaguely adumbrated unmarked state with which you started. Was that audible? Yeah. I, I didn't quite get what the, the last question, question is. If one of the people... if plus or minus is changed at any point, does PM, does this fall back to PM? Does it change the ground from which we chose to observe these interactions rather formally? I'm sorry, I'm still, it's yeah. partly my hearing, but uh, I'm still not quite sure what you're asking. It sounded like you were talking about the ground of formality. The wholeness that you started with. Oh, okay. So the commonality of CNN. Yeah, commonality. The unmarked state. As the individuals are changed, in, I don't think so. We're not talking about an absolute commonality. Right. We're talking about um, a looking for commonality, or mm -hmm. or or an agreeing upon a certain commonality. It's subject to change, it's subject to evolution. But I think the 
Well, I think it's also the name commonality, if you call that commonality. That's a little different than unity, I think. So if you call that unity as the ontological precondition, I think it's not something that's uh, that changes uh, according to different. Uh, yeah, because one is assuming. Well, I, I think maybe ontologically, yes, it's not the word I want, but I'm yeah. sure uh, because it's uh, you might say the hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Well, I say ontological because it's related to our being here. And uh, so in that sense, as long as we're here, that's the condition. As long as we're here, we're in the world. So that is not changeable because we are here and that's how we exist as far as I know. As long as we're alive. That's what we're here. Right. Alive. Yeah. 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 So different individuals, different opinions don't change the unity. I think that's the yeah, answer. And uh, I guess I see that to say that our being here is not changeable, I see as it is not possible for us to fully discriminate the differences between our being here now and our being here before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't assume an absolute ground of being. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Well, I think we we should now have uh, finished. We thank Kai Yang and Lee for their and we'll we'll start in ten minutes with Nicola to give the last talk. Are you going to use the data projector? Are you going to use the data projector? Oh, no, no, no. I'm like thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, stop recording.